Hey friends, welcome to Homegrown Florida. I'm Katrina and today with me, I have my buddy, Jacqueline. I know you guys love her. <laughs> she came out about two months ago and did this great consultation with me where we figured out all the plants, the native plants that we were gonna put in the front yard and the backyard. Unfortunately, that video got kind of wonky, got corrupted. It had problems. <laughs> And Katrina did her best to fix the problem. I tried. So I will show you some of the before shots and the during shots, but you don't want to hear any of the audio. Trust me. <laughs> I'm excited for Katrina hangout time. Yes. Because it's been too long since we got to hang out again together. <laughs> Whenever we get together, it's just like garden, garden, garden. We're going to just talk garden the whole time, yeah. which is awesome because, you know, my poor husband has to hear <laughs> way more than he ever signed up for. But Jacqueline <laughs> likes it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in this area we have three areas of the garden that we put native plants in i originally had some like landscaping type plants mm -hmm. i don't even know what they were but they were really sad looking little box hedges right here and these like fur not ferns but like grass type plants that were coming out pretty invasive too by the way they were just spreading didn't like them i wanted to get into native so we have a space here we have a space over here and one we're going to show you over there but for this space Check it out. Look at that guy back there. I know. That is our, what is that? Firebush. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, I know the name of it. I was saying it this morning. Yeah, that's the firebush and it has like doubled in size. <laughs> Literally, I just went like this. I was like, oh, you want a firebush, Katrina? Here, take this one. <laughs> in her yard. She just snatched it up. <laughs> I was like, is that going to make it? And it's done absolutely fine <laughs> and it was so tiny and it's getting so big and it doesn't it doesn't need a thing no it is just like yeah it's like just put me in the ground and and walk away yeah and it has been phenomenal it's great yeah and i love that it's already starting to show the like reddish leaves which is really pretty so cute so I, I think it's gonna, once it gets bigger, well, I think you're gonna love it anyways right now, but like, I think it's just gonna get better and better. Yeah, we can't wait for it to get really, really big and it becomes like that statement piece right here. Yeah, comes That's fall, I think you're gonna be like, whoa. Oh, okay, so it gets bigger in the fall time? No, this, cause of this, we're in summer right yeah. now. You're gonna see like, I, mine the first year grew like three to five feet in oh. the summer. So, wow. And you're close, pretty close to the climate I have. So yeah. it'll, it'll, It'll be pretty bushy. Now these guys, these are the Stokes Aster. And yeah. the funny thing about these is when we put them in, they all looked like, let me see if I can see. Like this one right here, which was kind of sad and small um, and no, no blooms. I think one had a bloom and, and that was it. But now the rest of them have all these blooms, but they're doing this thing. Is this normal? Oh, where they flop over? Yeah. Yeah, they might flop over. Um, you could stake them or you can stake them if you want. But they're fine like that, right? It's yeah, not, it's oh. normal. I, I mean, it's so like a lot of wildflowers um, of a certain type, this is just how they spread so that they don't compete with themselves. Oh. Because they bloom and then they're what they're trying to do is get their seeds kind of to the next Further spot out, yeah. and then the next spot so that they can slowly take it over. But you can see on this one, honestly, these are now different plants. So if you ever oh. want to look, if you can see here, we'll give you a close up later. But yeah. if you look right here, you can see this is like a plant. So if you, and then this is a plant and then you have like some plants here. So if you want oh, to, spreading. Oh, you know. can actually dig up some of these and then fill in, fill in mm -hmm. and it will be good for them in the long run. But yeah, like even this one's already dividing. The one behind me is already dividing. So That's you can, crazy. when you're ready to test it out, just dig up part of one and just start okay. to fill in. So if you want, but depending on your style, cause you kind of, she wanted more of like a, mulch border to kind of create dress separation right dress. yeah dress right dress. everything what do you call it keep your crazy in a box yeah keep your crazy in a box so she <laughs> could kind of have more of that separation but if you wanted to move some in a pot just so in case like one of these dies at some point because they don't live forever right um you know they'll go into next year they'll die back and then they'll come back again but if you wanted to make sure you could just dig up some of these little pups and put them in like a one gallon pot that's cool have them prepped for next season yeah because that if uh if you guys haven't thought about this, I know we're in summer, <laughs> but winter will be here before you know it. And there, this is the time when I start thinking about what I want to propagate, right? So yeah. what I need to protect. Me too. That's what I was doing. Yeah. You got to start thinking about that now because they need to get established in their little pot. Yeah. 
and and then it's great in a pot because if you get like a really cold winter yeah. i don't think you get like super frost <laughs> yeah i get no. frost up here <laughs> i get frost we got down to 23 degrees last year Ooh. and it was not like for an hour it was for i mean there were like wow. two days at 23 for like four to five hours which northern friends i know you're laughing at us right yeah. now <laughs> i think the worst i got this last winter and it was a cold winter yeah for us I think we got to like 34 degrees in the middle of the night for probably an hour. Yeah, that's not cool. We never, we never, because everyone was asking me about my bananas and I was like, nah, they're fine. They're fine. <laughs> that's why my banana is in a pot because yeah. there is no way it's going to survive up here. I watch uh, Pete over at Green Dreams, yeah. his die back to the ground, which he doesn't seem to mind, but I've been meaning to ask him. I'm like, hey, when they die back to the ground, do you ever get bananas up here? <laughs> like, do they ever actually produce? Yeah. Because they die back. Um, but knowing that you can propagate these, mm -hmm. this is the perfect time of year that I can start. Well, yeah. I think they'll be fine for this year, but I might take a couple just in case the winters are a little rough on them, but yeah. they're native, right? So they're, yeah. And these ones, so their native range is actually North Florida. Oh, perfect. So they really are meant to deal with much cooler temperatures than what we deal with. Yeah. Um, and, but so they will come back. I just, you know, oh, look at that. There's another yeah, baby. See, there's like another pup right there. Holy crap. They just come everywhere. Yeah. Don't they? And then these are going to put out pretty good sized seed heads. So, you know, you can grab a couple of those in case. And then typically you would, um, plant seeds for late winter and spring. The general rule for wildflowers is fall. Yeah. To start planting and okay. getting things going. That's good to know. Um, but yeah, more in ground than in pots and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so you could just do that and then you might have some more or you have gifts for people for Christmas. That's a good idea. Gifts. Because yeah. I'm trying to get my sister into native gardens. Um, she's actually already into it, but she doesn't, you know, she's just learning. She put in, uh, she put in Black Eyed Susans um, and then Tarot, which isn't native, but <clears throat> she put some black eyed Susans and she's babying them. And I, I'm just like the proud sister right now. <laughs> so, and she's, she's the recipient of those extra black eyed Susans. Oh, from the last video. <laughs> oh, nice. So I could get some of these propagated for her and she would absolutely love that as a present. Yeah. So Shelly, be ready. <laughs> <laughs> so we were a little worried about the sunlight element because we have this yeah. big camper, this invasive camper tree over here. Yeah, I thought we would be kind of on the edge of whether they would like it or not. But they're they're doing really, really well. So Does I, this look like they're doing well? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I was concerned about the light element as well. Um, and I was wondering if maybe they, these these two right here weren't flowering because of that. Or if they're um, just like little late bloomers. Sometimes they're just a little bit slower. Yeah. Um, but I think the way I can tell that you don't have as much of like a light issue, because I've planted some Stokes Aster at the edge of what they'll actually like, is when I look at that Stokes Aster and this Stokes Aster, um, these younger stalks are all upright. If you had a light issue when they were these younger stalks, they would already be like leaning significantly. And I don't mean falling over. I mean, the they're, they're going to be leaning towards wherever they feel the light is. And the other way you can tell is when the flowers are open. And I don't know if you're seeing, like, your Stokes Asters are opening mm -hmm. up when it, the sun's hitting them and then they kind of close up. Yes. Yeah. So if the heads were all always turned significantly to one direction. Yeah, they open kind of upwards. Which is saying they're getting enough light oh. all around. So if they were just all facing this way, then you know that that's, like, as they're much sun. They're pushing for that sunlight in that direction. Wow. Okay. Well, that that's great news because you you and I were both like, I don't know if you're going to get enough sun yeah. through this area. I mean, for only having been here one time and looking at the giant tree above. That if was we're like, living here, I didn't think it was enough I was sun. like, it could work. It might not be the best, but, like, it's definitely worth giving a try. And this is why I love trying natives in different spots because you know it, they aren't used as much by people so what will and won't work we don't have as much data on yeah versus like you know when we get into vegetable crops and stuff like right. that you can google you yeah. can there's way more information for all the variations of light and temperature and humidity to give you a lot a better sense of if it's going to work or not when we hit native plants it's like maybe it would work so i think it is if you've got the the space and the time like it's definitely worth giving a try if you're on the edge of whether it's going to work or not and it's that's interesting um the experiment aspect you know i love experiments yes. <laughs> so that's like my big geek thing but even with vegetables like we always say you have a specific microclimate so mm -hmm. you you know those things that are right on the edge it's kind of the same thing but we have so much information with vegetables and we have not yeah. a lot 
with the natives. And what might be the fact is that while in North Florida, because I think their native range is like pan, like the, the edge of the panhandle, mm -hmm. you know, we are about five degrees further south on the world. So we're getting a little bit more intense sun. So right. the fact that it's not as many hours as they would have up north is compensated for by the more intense sun. But the fact that they're opening upright generally, that just says that they're getting what they need. And it's a beautiful flower. So guys, if you haven't gotten a Stokes Aster, you have to get them. They are they're this I'm, big. They're like I cut them when they're full. They're not open right now because we have had nothing but rain dumping on <laughs> us. But when they are open, I usually stick my hand underneath it like this and they're just Yeah. It's so beautiful. And these are babies. Yeah. These just went in two months ago, guys. Two months. Yeah. They they're really pretty. Yeah. I love this flower. And what I've been finding is my monarchs are coming more and more to these. Oh. Um, and that's one of the things I've been paying attention to with my Stokes asters. I had them in shadier areas next to swamp milkweed, which is their host plant. So I would have thought they would have been interested. They've never been interested. But now that I moved them into a sunnier spot, they've been more interested. And my theory is, is that it's the heating up of the nectar that's attracting mm. them. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So it warms. It probably gives off some sort of scent for yeah. them or something. And so they've been just kind of like plopping in the middle and just sitting there. And I'm like, oh. I haven't experienced a lot of um, butterfly or bee activity in this particular area, but I'm, I'm guessing once the firebush gets a little bit bigger, we're going to start seeing that. But let's go move over to the other yeah. area because I bet I'm we're going to get yeah killed by bees. Watch. Okay, so here's the second area that we worked on, and there's a lot going on right here, <laughs> <laughs> which is actually a lot less than what was going on before, believe it or not. But we have the goldenrod. This, this is the slender goldenrod, yeah. so it's the shorter one. That's, uh, it looks pretty. It's done really well. I haven't seen it flower since I put it in the ground. It probably won't this first year until you get closer to late summer, fall. Okay. That's not unusual. But this goldenrod, it's got a pretty deep root system. All the goldenrods do. So what you'll find is in winter, it's going to die back. Mm -hmm. um, don't worry it will start coming back. As soon as it starts to warm up, you'll start seeing the leaves. And what happens is this plant kind of sends out its, uh, I don't know if what you want to call them, like stalks, and it's going to get fuller and fuller and fuller as the summer keeps oh, going. Cool. Um, and they'll get taller and taller. You'll see yeah. it be this tall sure. and they will flower. And then the next round will come and they'll get taller and bloom and taller and taller. Huh. At least that's how mine, I have seaside and I have sweet goldenrod and that's how they've behaved. Um, so I wouldn't be worried that they haven't bloomed yet because a lot of times with native plants, they are spending a lot of effort in the beginning putting in roots. roots. Yeah. And that's how they go the distance. And that's really common with perennials in general, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I know some of these are short lived perennials, but even when you're talking about a vegetable garden perennial, um, a lot of people are like, why isn't it producing? I just yeah. put it, you know, they just put it in that first year. They don't really shine until you're two, three, and beyond. Yeah. You know, they they really need to take that time to get established, unlike annuals that are quick, quick, yeah. quick, produce, produce. But these guys, you're playing the long game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they'll definitely, like, when they come back next year, you're going to be like this in, like, early spring, late winter. Oh, nice. So you'll see that, like, your whole timeline just shifts up the following year with these. That's cool. And there's, like, a rule... I don't know if you've told them this rule. So the, the or the phrase for mm -hmm. natives, it's the first year they sleep, the second year they creep, the third year they leap. Oh, okay. I like that. So creep is sleep. they start to You'll start spread. to see the move kind of and get bigger. And then the third year they leap. Some of them really leap. That means they'll spread bigger. They can depends on the plant. They get okay. big, they start throwing seeds everywhere. Okay. It depends on the plant, but yeah. I'm third, about it. Year three is for, especially your perennials is when you're going to go like, whoa. So let's talk about creep because whatever is happening with these guys, do you remember how small these mm -hmm. were? Yeah. I they remember were... she wanted to put them really close together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh no, they're way too, f I, myself, I'm thinking this, she's the expert. So I went with what she said, but she's like, you know, make sure that you have some separation because they're going to get big. And I'm like, they're like these little tiny yeah. plants. And then, you know, when I knew that you were going to be stopping by, I, I came out here and I was just kind of looking at stuff and I was like, yeah, she was definitely right on these guys. <laughs> yeah, they This are... is first year. Yeah. yeah. This is two months. <laughs> well, so this plant versus like your goldenrod, this is more of an annual. So it's going to reseed. So this one, you'll definitely want to collect some of these flower heads. Okay. So that you can create your own starts. 
because they might grow back from the same plant, but typically they're reseeding. So okay. they're like a more annualized. And they'll crop reseed off. themselves pretty naturally as well? Yes, but if you want to do your dress, dress, dress. right. You yeah. know, I'm kind of, you're going to love it. Oh, are you I'm, going? I'm going a little wild. Ah! Because, <laughs> I'm going a little wild because I'm really feeling this whole like line of, it. Th those need to fill in down there. But I'm really feeling this like mess of flowers right here because not, I thought we were going to have lots of bees right now because every time I come out here, it's just a mound of bee activity, yeah. just nonstop bee activity. It is insane. I've never seen so many bees. Yeah. Um, they love this part right here. Yeah. The rain's just, the rain. everyone stays inside for the yeah. rain, including your bees and butterflies. Yeah. Yeah. They're not feeling it right now, but I'm kind of feeling the wild look here. I love this like whole line of just these blanket flowers i think they're just the cutest thing ever and you can knock them back from the stone so like if you're feeling like they're coming too far over just just cut them right and they'll be fine yeah yeah and then i would just collect some seed heads just so you like this right here i would collect just so later you can once they start getting the little yeah wisp, oh there there's, there, there's some seeds, some right, seeds there. right there <laughs> so i would collect some of those seed heads those ones might be a little too damp who knows um but yeah and then that way save some so you can start your own plants because that's one of the challenges, right? With native plants is they're pretty pricey when you buy starts. Yeah. And while we love supporting our local businesses, um, if you can collect some of your own seeds and just regrow, you'll tend to have a better. I'm a big fan of seed starting that or seed saving. Like I really, really am all about, you know, being able, well, it's not just a financial thing, right? Yeah. In many ways it is, it's cheaper, of course, because you're saving your own, but the plant, I don't necessarily know if this applies to natives, but when it, we're talking about vegetables, you can start to condition them yeah. for your area if you're just repeating saving over and over yeah. and over. There's no difference. It's yeah. a concept, the same idea, is that they'll just be more wired for your area. Yeah. And it's especially it. since you, like, because we're... Because you got these from Wilcox. Yeah. Um, a lot of the Tampa Bay nurseries are sourcing from one grower who's down in the Bradington area. So it's more optimized technically for the Bradington area right? than where you live, which is a little bit different. Not hugely different, but... Still Florida, but yeah. a <laughs> little north, a little bit But, north. you know, your, the level of sand in your soil or clay in your soil, like those little differences that can make it a little bit more challenging. If you've got one that's taking off and looking great, like, save the seeds. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> now, I did lose one slender golden rug. We had three. There's another one way down there that is doing okay, and a third one that just is not doing okay. I'm fairly certain it's because of the um, sunflowers from the shade from the yeah, sunflowers. I would guess. I'm waiting for the sunflowers to save the seed, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll chop those down. But I left it in the ground in hopes that there's some root system that's still intact. Yeah. And it might still pop up later. Well, especially because you don't have much longer on those sunflower heads. Right. I You still got time for that thing to get established before winter hits. Right. So I, it, it could bounce back. It is a challenging area just yeah. location-wise for it. But. but the sunflowers got super huge over here, mm -hmm. which you, in, in the video that we did before that y'all <laughs> didn't get to see, <laughs> that was one of the indicators that this might be an okay spot, even yeah. though it seems like it gets a lot of shade. If a sunflower can grow mm -hmm. nine feet tall, agree. It's I agree with my original opinion. Pro it probably will work. Right now, it's getting shaded out by the sunflowers, but we're going to take those down because they're annuals; they're not perennials. And then the the red ones, the cord cordelians. Cordelians. So I took your advice, and over here we pulled out one of the. Um, Hibiscus. I think it's like a Hawaiian hibiscus or something. Yeah. So um, the cordelia is like a Florida friendly plant, but it does, mm -hmm. it's a way to get good color and shadier spots. Right. They have those really pretty red leaves. Love them. And then Patrina was just saying her husband really likes them. And then they had a hibiscus that was kind of covering a window that they enjoy looking out. Right. So these were all things that, you know, we talked about. Yeah. And so we ripped out that, yeah. that hibiscus. And I took cuttings from the Cordelias. And guys, this is how simple this, this one is. <laughs> you literally take a cutting and I just jabbed it in the ground and walked away. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's looking a little rough, but it's yeah. taking. It's, yeah. it's hanging in there. And if it doesn't take, I'll just grab another little cutting. Yeah. And stick it <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And they will, and especially doing like cuttings like that before the summer. Right. Because the summer, because it's a tropical plant. So 
tropical plants like the summers of Florida. So the more that you propagate things, you can be less babying to them. Yes. In the summer. You can be rougher on them. Yeah. I wouldn't do it in the winter. They'll probably die in the winter. Yeah, they'll die in the winter. But but that's why now is the time to really start those propagating, the seed saving and all that stuff because these plants are at their prime Mm -hmm. and we can separate them. Let me ask you a question on this guy right here. Is this two plants? Does it do the same thing? Mm -hmm. Yep. So you can. So if that one doesn't come back, I'll just Mm -hmm. snap a little piece of that and put it over there. I would just dig out. Dig out the root system and stuff. Yeah. I would just dig out that one little one and then move it over there. Well, now I have solved that problem. Yeah. <laughs> Up to the next one. Let's check out the blue-eyed grass. Yay. So, <laughs> so it, I don't know if you remember, but we put in the blue-eyed grass. Yeah. And then the rain lilies. Yes. I can't tell the difference between the two. Yes. So I don't know if the rain lilies are still there. I don't see any. Is this one right here? Uh, mm, doesn't look like it. That looks okay. like your blue-eyed grass. Okay. So I think I lost the rain lilies, the little delicate creatures that they were. And as much as I loved them, they're obviously a little too fussy for me. Yeah. <laughs> they, they are much more fussy and they, it's too easy if anyone or any animal walks in the area that like you could lose them if they're not pretty well established. Okay. But the blue eyed grass, mm-hmm. is, he, they're light. They haven't grown a lot, but they're not, they're not big plants anyway, right? Mm-mm. No, they'll just spread over time. So they'll get like, they're not, they're just different. So what I can see here on this one is like, you can see it's spreading. That's what this one is right here, Mm -hmm. right? Yep. So you got more coming out. So these are actually starting to become individual plants. Okay. And so it'll just keep spreading and spreading slowly. So eventually if I just left it alone, could it take up this whole area? It might. It will definitely spread out like in a circle like here. Okay. That's cool. And then See, I'm getting more wild. Yeah. <laughs> I know. She was so loud. Like, when we talked last time, it was very much like, Has I to want. Have its own. I have to see mulch around it, oh, all this other stuff. But then once they get in there, once you get looking at them and yeah. stuff, and you see all the activity, I'm like, let's put more. Let's be crazy. Like, let's see how much I can cram into one small, small space. Yeah. Because that's how I was. I was like, wow, this is great. Like your blanket flower area, if it was in my yard, I'd be like, can I shove some other wildflowers in there? Like Just like something. to have something popping up. That's how I would do it. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm just saying that's what I would end up doing. Now, when you came here the last time, I had all these plants. Yes. But you didn't get to see the backyard. No, because you only had Black Eyed Susans, and it was a lot of, in theory, talk. And I did a video where I showed, like, how I put them in. Mm-hmm. But we're going to just take a couple minutes because i got to show off. Yay. And there were two other plants that weren't in that video that I got Yay. that I'm going to show you. I'm totally a geek now about natives. And by the way, they are just so easy. So easy. I don't – I hate to even say this as a gardener. I don't do anything to them. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, I put them in, I water them a couple times, you know, just yeah. to make sure they got established. And then once the rain started, like I, I, you know, I mulch it really good. And every once in a while, not now, not yet, maybe once a year, I'll probably come through and put some compost down, you know, just make sure that they're fed. But mm. man, no, don't even have to do that. Just ignore them. If you have mulch, that's enough. Just ignore them. Because if you give too much nutrition, they'll actually be unhappy. Okay. Remember, they like Florida's cruddy, sandy soil. <laughs> Naturally. Easy as plants. Easy as plants. Yeah. They, <laughs> and do nothing to them. I walk by them and look at how pretty they I had are. to stop laying mulch in one area because it was breaking down and enriching the soil too much that one of my native plants didn't like it. And when I stopped putting mulch in the area, it took off more. So it likes crap. It just likes crappy soil. Yeah. That's, that's funny. Many of them, like really crud soil (laughs) so here we are in the backyard and right here is where we have all the natives that i put in and so so we have the starry rosaweed yeah the coreopsis i grew from seed myself really yeah which one did you get i don't know or it looks it doesn't um urban harvest at least sent it to me in her seed club i think she does lance a lot i don't think she does love yeah, so, so I bet Lan- uh, most people do more. I don't know why people seem to start with Lancelotta. I don't know. I love Leavenworthy, but I mean they're both. 
I I don't know the difference. I will find out. <laughs> oh, I can tell you. Um, they're both Coryopsis for Florida. They both grow naturally a lot throughout Florida. Um, the biggest difference is yellow flower with yellow center or yellow flower with black center. Oh, okay. So I like the yellow with the black center. Okay. The Lancelot is the yellow with yellow. Well, I, don't, I so just people seem to pick that one. First. So you think this one is the Lancelot? The Lancelot. It just the she, the the leaf shape looks similar to Love and Worthy. I think also I've just seen on her website that she has Lancelot. And it just, it seems to be what people sell more of. Like gotcha. when they sell seeds, they don't tend to carry the Love and Worthy for whatever reason. Hmm. I did verify with her that it was native and good. she confirmed that. So we we're good. I don't know if they make them guys when you go shopping for native plants, especially seeds. Yeah. Talk to somebody who knows. <laughs> oh, because that wasn't there that video where you showed the swamp milkweed, and I was like, "Oh, that's not the Florida ecotype." I got blanket plant. flower and sm- swamp milkweed, and neither one of them were native, so that was frustrating. Uh, let me show you. Yeah. Take a look. You know what that is, right? I know exactly what that that's is. That's the salt and pepper. That is the salt and pepper. It was so tiny when it first started, and it's getting so big so quick. Yeah. And then the milkweeds. So I've got two kinds of milkweeds. These are the butterfly that I bought from Wilcox, but I've got these little guys. And there's another one right here. I know it doesn't look like much, but that's because I had like 30 caterpillars. Mm-hmm. I counted them one day. Weird they said like those that. were butterfly weed? Yes. Butterfly milkweed. Okay. Oh, wait. Are you sure? No, they're... it's swamp. They all look like swamp. Yeah, it's swamp. Sorry, it's swamp. These are the but the new ones are the butterfly milkweed. Yeah. Okay. The babies. Okay. That makes more sense because I was like, I'm looking at the leaves. I'm like, you either got because uh, swamp milkweed and tropical milkweed are very, very, very similar before they flower. Okay. But butterfly weeds a little bit different enough that with leaves you could tell. Um, so when you said they said it's butterfly weed, I'm like, oh, I hope it's not the golden tropical milkweed because it looks to me like. Just looking at it, I was like, oh, swamp milkweed. <laughs> yes, it's definitely swamp milkweed. Okay. Um, I have one in a pot over there because when all the babies were here, I think I think most of them died, unfortunately, because I didn't have enough for them to eat. Um, you can see they ate. I mean, there's some. they were all sticks like that. Mm-hmm. I'm, ex- I'm hoping that one grows back. It will. I'm, yeah, okay. It 100% will. I didn't know if the ba- I put the babies in because I'm like, you guys got to eat, you know? <laughs> I'd be careful with those ones right now just because they could eat them to death. Well, they did with that like that one, but yeah. I don't know if it's going to come back or not. It looks like it's got a little green. It's got top. a little green to it. So, uh, there was one right here that they ate down. I don't see it anymore, so I'm pretty sure. So those fine. ones I might put protection on just for the near, like these little ones, yeah. just so they can get like this about, big. Yeah, about the height even that half, these were. Half yeah. the height. I even brought out. Mm-hmm. I brought out a tropical swamp milkweed. That was the swamp milkweed that you told me wasn't uh, native. Mm-hmm. I even brought it out because I'm like, okay, it's a first year. Wait, it's a tropical swamp milkweed or it's just a swamp milkweed? It was the sma- swamp milkweed seed packet that you said oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, so that the one you got from my garden? Yeah, yeah. So that is a native swamp milkweed to the Americas. It's just not the version that grows in Florida. Oh, okay. So it's still a native plant to the United States. It's just... Not the swamp milkweed for Florida. Yeah, the Florida, like the difference you can tell is the flower color. So Florida's is like a pale pink, and most of the countries it's like more of like a purpley pink. Right, right. It's brighter. Um, it's not, you know, we don't want really from an <laughs> ecosystem restoration. We don't want them mixing, but they also might not work as well in our state. So well, I really only brought it out here because they had eaten everything down to stumps, and I was trying to give them something else to eat. Yeah, but that's fine. Then I don't know if this is normal or not. They crawled off. Uh-huh. And just crawled away. Yes. But they didn't seem like they were big enough to... How big were they? Some of them were like what you would expect. But others were like half the size. And they crawled away. Yeah. I feel like maybe they were in search of more. Because they ate all of it. I mean, there's leaves on it now. But there wasn't leaves no, on it. That's normal. Um, yeah, so some of those would die. But also, in like the wild, it's like 1 in 10 caterpillars survive anyways. So if you have 2 out of 10, you're like... Well, I did find a chrysalis. Is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. I found a chrysalis that was empty. So I assume it already mm-hmm. flew away. Yeah. And I've seen a lot more monarchs in the backyard now since. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. So the caterpillars, when they get to their, what's called the fifth instar. So there's different sizes are called love, like one, first instar, second instar. Until they get the fifth instar. When that's when they're ready to. But even starting when they're 
like kind of a medium sized third and star, they will start going and scoping out where they're going to put their crystals. Oh. So it's very common that like you'll see them in the morning, but then like come the afternoon, you're like, are they Where'd dead? They go? Are they yeah. what happened? And then you'll come back like maybe that evening or the next morning and they're yeah, back they now. So they, I, my kiddo called them, they go on walks. Yeah. Um, and they can go when they're figuring out where they want to put their chrysalis, they can go up 20 to 30 feet from the plant that they usually hang out on. Yeah. They were cruising. Yeah. So they'll, they'll go. The chrysalis went all the way over to my, um, rotating compost bin <laughs> and it hung from my compost bin. Yep. The, yeah. So they'll go pretty far. They'll to find whatever it is that they want. And what you will do over time as this fills in, they may not walk as far. So like as this fills in, cause I found caterpillars inside of mine because okay. mine is near my swamp milkweed. So once this is bushier and it's more sheltered, they might actually go in here. And what I found with another native plant that I used as a low ground cover mix with it, they were actually putting their chrysalises on the underside of some of the leaves. So they might do that with some of these plants, okay. but they might not. They might still go wandering. Yeah. And it's kind of like what we talked about with that Stokes Aster. Like that's kind of, it's not a bad thing that they go wandering. Yeah. Because that's how they spread their territory more and more. That's how they, I mean, that's, I'm cool with them being natural. See, bees are right there. I do. I saw that. And they, these flowers opened up the ro rosin weed, mm -hmm. rosin weed. Yeah. Those opened up first. I lost one over here. Mm. I don't know why. Ever When I got it from the nursery, it looked constantly thirsty. Like constantly thirsty. And I, I just kept watering it, watering it. It would get better and then it would get worse and then better and then worse. And then finally, I stuck it in the ground and I watered it a few times. All the rest of them were looking great. And this one just... It was just limping along, and finally I was like, you're just yeah. going to have to either live or not. I'm not going to keep fussing with you. Yeah. <laughs> and it decided not. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So I, I let him uh, move on. But you'll have seeds soon from these flowers. Right, and I was thinking I'll just, I'm going to get wild back here yeah. too. I'm just going to yeah. just sprinkle the seeds around. Now let me show you the two that nobody's this, seen yet. This is looking really good though. So over here is the one that... I was excited about I know you were kind of like, I don't know if this can happen or not, but it's worth a try. So on this one, I have, I took a couple Black Eyed Susans. I know they're not planted well. Just ignore that part. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> yes. And then I've got <laughs> my coral honeysuckle with a weed right here. So let me get that out of there. Mm -hmm. But the coral honeysuckle, it's not doing the thing where it climbs just yet. I haven't seen climbing happen. Oh, it doesn't have like... Like Gra keys. grabby things. No, it's a very like lean flop. Wispy. And it'll just kind of, so you'll, once things get a little bit longer, you'll, you'll help it a little bit. Cause they'll just flop around. And okay. So you just point them through. Cool. They do climb. It's just. They're kind of lazy climbers. Lazy climbers. That's a good way of putting it. They're lazy very lazy climbers. climbers. It's a really, it's really cute. It seems to be okay over here. It looks happy. Yeah, it Everything doesn't. It, it looks happy. Yeah, it looks happy. It doesn't mind these guys. Honestly, these I just put in the front of this because I needed to do something with the plants until I gave a few to my sister. So I don't know if this is going to take up this whole space or not. I don't know, but um, yeah, but they can have stuff at the base. Yeah. And over time, like what I told Katrina last time is like as it gets more mature, it won't have as much greenery down at the bottom. It'll be more up. If you look at pictures of really mature coral honeysuckles, they tend to have to be more top heavy. Yeah. And then more just like you'll see the vines. So having something near the base that like adds greenery or color back in is a good idea. Um, but it'll just, I have mine with uh, in the middle of a uh, narrow leaf yellow top, which if you've ever seen that, it kind of grows like Mexican petunia. Oh, okay. Very full and it just comes up and through it. So it doesn't mind being amidst other plants. Cool. Well, then the last one. The shade area of like doom. Yes, the shade area of doom. Um, I just remember you're like, nothing grows here ever. So I, I didn't leave it on that side because the sprinkler head would have just like not been able to water this area. So I brought it on this side mm -hmm. and here it is. Yeah, I just put grass mulch down. Yeah. Not that it needs it with all this rain that we had. But this one's actually starting to do its little climbing behavior this one climbs this it's one, got the little you things can see the little like uh i don't know what these are called but officially but i little, call them grabbers yeah i call them little doodahs <laughs> <laughs> my channel i call them doodahs but yeah this quirky stem will start to have you seen the little gulf fritillaries yet trying to 
I haven't seen the golf literaries. I've seen a couple before I put this in, like over by the marigolds. Um, I've seen some zebra long wings show up. And then what was that one I put on, uh, I put it on Instagram. It was a like white a peacock. Yeah, the white peacock. Yeah. I've seen that one. Um, I don't, the but I haven't seen anything golf around golf. this very much yet. Yeah, not yet, but not yet. they'll come. They'll find it. They will eventually. They'll find it. But there's been a lot more, a lot more activity mm -hmm. through the yard. I mean, sometimes I come out and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go hand pollinate my, I, I just redid some squash. I'm going to go hand pollinate my squash. And then I, I go to take my little brush in there and there's bees all in there and they're flying at me. And I'm like, okay, guys, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Y'all do your thing. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> and then I get near the flowers or over on this side. I here. PSA, public service announcement. <laughs> if you have a, what are these things called with the pool? Oh, lanai cage? Lanai cage. If you have a pool cage, don't leave your doors open. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So I am learning this the hard way. I never had this problem before, you know, putting in the natives and putting in all the flowers. I never had this problem of getting monarchs stuck inside my yeah. pool cage. And so now what I have to do, I leave my doors open so the dogs can come in and out and get water and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like, I can't do that. Yeah. You have, they, to be much more careful. you have to be more careful. Everything needs to be closed. We bought a butterfly net because now I got to catch them when they get in there and bring them back outside. The bees too. I catch the bees and the butterflies. Oh, you got to hire. I just go, I just kind of wave them down and I just gently take them with my hand. It's so high. Yeah. For yours. Yeah. I and they, that. they. I'm trying to help them and they don't know. So they fly to the highest point in the center. Yeah. And it's like in the middle of the pool. And so. Yeah. They're not no. very happy with me. But. But you're doing good for them. And it yeah. looks great. Thank you. This looks great. This is going to be great. That's going to be. It's looking really, really good. It's all coming in so well. And all the advice that you gave during that consultation was just spot on spot on like everything has worked i mean other than you know some things that were my fault or some things that i think that maybe the plant wasn't That's super healthy right. coming in you know yeah, not every plant lives guys <laughs> If you've got like a 90% rate, 95% yes. rate of purchase. Yes. Surviving, that's a pretty good. It's a really good rate. And it's just, I haven't hand pollinated anything in the vegetable garden. I she haven't. got a lot of tomatoes because I saw them in yeah. the eye. I was like, I just, I showed her the mountain of freezer tomatoes that are in there. Yeah. It, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. When you told me last time you hand pollinated, I was just like, what? Why? Yeah. It's a I lot remember. of work. And I haven't had to do any of that. And I really didn't expect the pollinator activity to help with like things like tomatoes and stuff. But mm -hmm. everything this season has been an immensely large yield as compared to previous years. And the only really big thing I changed was flowers and natives. Yeah. That's really the only two things that I did this season. You guys know my four goals for the season was to put in a new bed, focus on watermelons, get a native garden started, and... Uh, put some flowers in so the, it really was just the flowers and the natives and I am just beyond ecstatic and so pleased with how it all came out so definitely big thanks to Jacqueline at the Wild Floridian for helping me out yes <laughs> so guys if you have not gotten into natives if you don't know where to start Jacqueline has some great videos I'm gonna pop them up uh, right after this one that you can check those out really take a look at the natives even if you're not in florida if you're up in one of the northern states there's native plants for you guys too let's get back into focusing on the wildlife and the local area and the plants that are designed to live here so that we don't have to work as hard Facts. happy gardening guys bye